What is going on people? My name is Radhi and I make weekly website design and development videos here on this channel. Today we're going to create a simple responsive navigation bar with a hamburger menu using Tailwind CSS and OpineJS. Tailwind CSS is a utility first CSS framework packed with ready to use classes that can be used to pretty much compose and build any design directly into your markup. And OpineJS is a rugged minimal tool for composing behavior directly into your markup. Think of it like jQuery for the modern web. And both of them, OpineJS and Tailwind TSS, can be used without ever leaving your HTML, which is super nice. I've also written a fairly detailed blog post on the same topic, explaining pretty much everything. So if you wish, check it out. It will be linked in the description below. And now, Let's jump on the computer and get started. Hey, welcome everybody and let's get started. I've already created a project folder called menu and inside this project folder I have index.html and I have an image that we're going to use for our background just so our website doesn't look too empty. Let's start by actually starting our website and I'm going to be using the live server extension in Visual Studio Code purely because every time we make a change, we won't have to refresh the browser. Awesome. Let's open the Explorer here and start our website by doing right click and open live server. And this should open it in our browser. Let's remove the Explorer in here and start typing HTML. Let's select HTML5 and we can get started. So if I save this, you will see that things are being formatted for me. And this is because I'm using Prettier and I've configured it that every time I save the document, it actually formats the document for me instead of doing right click and format. That's all. Save this and let's go back to the browser and go to tailwindcss.com. If you click on get started, you will see a couple of options to install Tailwind CSS. And in my previous video where I've done a crash course on Tailwind CSS, I used the Tailwind CLI, which is a very good option. But today I'm going to be using the Play CDN purely because it's super easy to get started and mess around with the Win TSS. But saying this, it's actually not a good choice for prediction. And this is because the CDN is actually fairly large. I believe that is roughly 370 kilobytes and that is gzipped. So it's a fairly large file. Don't use it for prediction, but it's awesome for messing around. Now, to get started with the CDN, all we need to do is scroll down and copy this script. And we need to paste this script into our head element. So I'm going to go back to my website here, index.html, and paste this inside the head like so. Save it, and we're done. We should be able to start using Tailwind CDN. So if we go back, we could use this example action here. So I'm going to copy this and then paste it inside the body. And if we save this and go back, Let's go back to the website. You will see if we refresh the first time, you will see that we're getting the fancy font, which is underlined. Awesome. Tailwind seems to be working. And another proof, we can do right click and inspect. And then if we go to the body here, you will see that we get loads of Tailwind variables, which is good. Cool. For this uh, tutorial, we're going to be starting from our first and working our way up. Let me move this to the left side and let's start developing our navigation. So to start with, let's remove the H1 and let's give our body like a little bit of a color or I'm going to be using an image just so it looks a little bit more interesting. That's all. And because we're going to have a flyout menu and a blurry background, it might look a little bit better when we have content on the website. So to do this, what I'm going to do is use this image as a background color, as a background image for the body. Obviously you don't have to do this, but, and I'm going to be probably removing that at the end of the tutorial anyway. So let's do that by doing a class name here, background dash, and in brackets like so, we can do URL, and inside here we can do in curly brackets, we can do single quotes and put the name and the path of the image. So this is going to be unsplash.jpg. And also because this is in the main directory here, I don't have to specify a path. So that should be absolutely fine. And also I want this image to be covering the whole background when we're on mobile. So I'm just going to do background cover. 
Don't worry too much about this image. I'm going to be removing it anyway. But if you see some sort of an image here, and if I toggle the mobile, you will see that it's uh, covering now quite well, which is what I want it. Okay, let's start building our header. So to do this, I'm going to be using the HTML5 element header. Press enter. And inside here is where we're going to be creating all elements for the header. So we're going to have three main components. So the first one is going to be the logo. The second one is going to be the menu toggle. And the third element is going to be the main navigation for uh, like bigger screens. So main navigation like so. Okay, let's start by creating the logo. For the logo, we can just wrap everything in a link. So a href, and this is going to be slash, which is going to be going to the homepage of our website. And then inside here, we can paste our logo. I don't actually have a logo. So what I'm going to do is put logo like so and save. So this is not going to look very pretty. As you can see, it's kind of small. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a class name and make it a little bit bolder. So let's do text of large and font bold. Like so, save this, go back. And as you can see, this is looking better now. The next thing that I want to do is create the mobile toggle button. As we're starting from mobile, we create the mobile toggle first, and then we create this one after. So what's going to happen in here? Let's create a button. And inside this button, I actually want to have a nice hamburger menu. So what I can do is go back. If you go to hereicons.com, just search for menu. And I'm going to be using this, the first one here. So I'm going to copy the SVG and paste the SVG inside the button like so. This is perfect. This should come up in our website. As you can see, it's here. Uh, maybe I can zoom in a little bit so you can see like so. And if you wish to, we can even add a little label here, uh, just saying menu. So you could put something like sp span and put menu and we can style this in a second as well. So let's have a look. This is looking great. Now, as you can see, the logo and the menu are here on the left side. What I want to achieve is I want to have the logo on the left side and the menu to be on the right side. I mean, the toggle menu and the actual desktop menu to be on the right side. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start styling the header. So let's go back to the header here and give it a class name. So first of all, for the header, we can give it a background of white just so it looks a little bit better and maybe a drop shadow of small. As you can see, we definitely need some space between uh, the on the left side and the top. So what I'm going to do is give it some padding. So padding on the Y axis could be something like four and padding on the X, Y, X axis could be eight. We you can see that we have padding on top, bottom, left and right, which is what I want. And now let's paste the items so they're not stuck together. So this is on the left side and this is on the right side. So what we can do is make the header a flex element. So I'm going to put it here, flex, and I can justify stuff between that. And now because this is a flex, I can actually justify the elements between. And this should push the element, as you can see, on the left side and the right side. But now I'm getting the problem where the logo is not in the middle and probably the menu wouldn't be in the middle as well, but because it's filling the whole header is kind of hard to tell. So I definitely want the menu to be kind of like middle aligned, center aligned. So what I can do is inside here, we can do item center and save. I think that's going to be pretty much it. That's already looking great. Obviously the logo is a bit basic, but that doesn't matter too much. Now let's concentrate on the actual button styling. We can do exactly the same thing as the header. So what I'm going to do for the button, let's give it a class. We can even give it a background if you wish. It's up to you or border, whatever makes it more visible and easy to use. For this, what I'm going to do is make it flex, but because the default uh, is flex row, I think that the elements are going to be next to each other. So I don't want that. I want this to be columns. So what I'm going to do is flex and then call. So that should fix the problem here, as you can see. And I want to center align them, um, middle align them, everything I want. I want everything to be center aligned in here. 
So what I'm going to do is do items center and maybe align middle. Let's save this. And as you can see, this is looking a lot better. Obviously, you don't have to have the menu. Maybe we can make the menu a little bit smaller. So to do this on the span here, we can give it a class and the class can be just text extra small. Let's have a look. That looks quite nice. I like it. What we want to achieve next is when we go on a bigger screen, we actually want to hide this. So to do this, we can go to the button. So we can say after the flex here, maybe we can say median screens hidden. Like so, save this. And if we go back, you will see that when we go above, above middle screens, which is just about 760 pixels, you will see that the menu is now disappearing, which is exactly what I want. So after this point, we actually want to create another menu, desktop menu, and make it appear. So we can use the reverse thing of what we've just done. So let's start by creating the desktop menu now. Let's go back and we can create it around here. So for the desktop menu, we can wrap it in an app tag. And inside here, we're going to have an unordered list with a list element and an A element. So the first thing that we need to do is let's start by writing two simple links. So the first one, let's give it a hash so it's not broken. So the first one, let's say it's home. Let's copy this by doing all shifting down and let's say about. So we have two links. Let's save this and let's see what we get. As you can see, we have them here stacking up next to each other, which is great. But obviously we want to hide them on small screens. So the first thing that we can do is on the nav here, we can give it a class and the class name needs to be hidden. As we're starting from mobile and then on medium screens. So we're basically doing the reverse here on medium screens. We actually want to display this as flex. So look at what happens now. If we save this, no main menu here, it's still working. And if I go up, this is going to hide now. And the other menu is showing, which is exactly what I wanted. Now we definitely want to style the main navigation a little bit. It looks, it doesn't look so great. So let me zoom in and we can style this a little bit better. So basically one thing that I spotted right now is that I've got one list with the two links, which is wrong. We need to have the links in individual lists, which is absolutely fine here. So I can create another list and I can paste the link of about in here. Great. If I go back, as you can see, we have the list in here and they're stacking underneath each other. And this is not what we want. I actually want them in one single row. To do this, we can go to the URL and we can give it a class name and we can use flex and just give it a flex row like, like so. And this should solve our first problem, as you can see. But now the items are very close to each other. So there are a couple of ways of actually doing this, but uh, what I'm going to do is just give him a gap of two. So this is going to give him a little bit of a gap. What I want to actually achieve is I actually want to give a padding on each button itself, on each link itself, so it's easier to press. Obviously, I've zoomed in a lot now and it's easy to press now, but it won't be if it's like so. So let's do that. That needs to be, the padding needs to be done on the actual links. So I'm going to have to do that individually. Let's start with the home, first of all. So for the home, we can do inline flex or block. Um, I think both will work. Let's give each button a little bit of padding. So this is going to have a padding on the Y axis of two, and uh, maybe padding on the X axis of three. Let's also give this one a background of slate 200 and round it. Round it like so. Let's have a look. We obviously have or home button here as active and that's why I wanted to give it a background color, but maybe we can do hovers on the other ones. So let me show you what I mean. So we're going to have to do similar things for the about. I'm going to give it a class name, inline flex, uh, part in Y of two, part in Y of two, part in X of three. And instead of background slate 200, which is the gray color, we're going to do hover. And this is going to be background slate of 200 and then round it like so let's save this and let's have a look so if i was to hover over about uh, okay so hover background slate 200 okay so if i was to go back and refresh you will see that the uh, when i hover about we have this nice 
hub effect, which is absolutely fine, exactly what I want. And now we can literally duplicate the about button a couple of times. So let's grab the, the list and copy it two more times. And let's say maybe we can have articles and maybe we can have contact. Just for the demo, let's go back. All of them seem to work and they're all looking nice. Perfect. Now, as our home is the active one, we can also go back in here and on the link, we can potentially give it an area current, area dash current, and this is gonna be equals to true. I'm not gonna mess around with the, this too much. Obviously that needs to be done depending on what page it is. So I'm not gonna mess around with this too much, but just so you know, you can have this uh, for accessibility purposes. Let's now have a look at what's going on. So we have our main navigation here, perfect. And when we scroll down, it hides and we get our mobile navigation, which is ideal. Exactly what we wanted so far. And now we can concentrate on our flyout menu for the mobile. Okay, let's start by creating our pop-out navigation. So I'm gonna use nav and inside the nav, we're going to have two main elements. So the first one is going to be our unordered list, which will include the links. And the second one is going to be a close button. So let's start by creating the unordered list. And this is going to be very similar or pretty much the same as this one here. So what I'm going to do, unordered list. And inside the list, we're going to have a list item. And inside the list item, we're going to have a link like so. So the first one is going to be code home. And let's create one more just for the example and call it about. I'll add some more once we do the classes, so I don't have to copy and paste them all the time. But now if we go back, you will see that we have home and about. Cool. Let's create the close button here as well. So the close button is just going to be a standard button. So this is going to be button. And inside this button, we're actually going to have an icon a close icon. So if you go to hero icons and if you look for close, you can see this X icon, this one I'm going to choose. So I'm going to copy the SVG and go back, paste it in here and save. If I go back, you will see that we get the close button. We can actually start styling this slowly, starting from the top. I want the navigation to be full width and full height. Also, I want it to be at the top of everything else which means that we're going to have to bump up the Z index. Let's convert this into a fixed element. So it's floating on top of everything. So let's do nav class. This is going to be fixed. And this is going to start from top zero, right zero, bottom zero and left to zero. Now we won't be able to see this unless we put some sort of a background. And in fact, I'm just going to do a uh, background blur, which is going to be super cool when we finish the navigation. So let's do a backdrop blur and small. So we don't want it to be way too blur. And also we want the setting this to be set to 10. I believe in Tailwind TSS, it starts from zero to 10, 20 and so on. So I think this might work. And if we go back, you will see that everything is now blurred, which means that the navigation is taking the full width and full height of the window here, which is awesome. This is exactly what we want. Now this unordered list, I want to have from the left side to the right side, but I want it to be only roughly 80%. Let's have a look at how we can do that. So for the unordered list, let's give it, let's give it a class name. And maybe we can start by positioning absolute. So absolute, then we can do top zero, right zero and bottom of zero. Now we don't have to put left in this one because I'm actually going to give it a width. So if we go back, you will see that the navigation is here on the right side. If I hover over here, the actual element I might be able to zoom in. You might be able to see a little bit better like so. Uh, you will see when I hover over, when I hover over this element is here on the right side, which is fine. So I need to give it a little bit of width and I want it to be roughly 80%. So for this, I went back to Tailwind and if I put width and click on this, so if you go to sizing and width, the one that I'm going to use is going to be, you have to scroll down a little bit, 
but the one that I want to use is the 80% one, which is this one here. So I want to use the W10 slash 12. And this is 83%, which should work perfectly fine for what I'm trying to achieve. So I'm going to give it a width of that, save it, and let's have a look. And as you can see now, our menu is up to here, which is fine. Obviously, we don't have a background color, so we can't tell. But what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to give it a padding Y of 4. And then let's give it a background color of white. Let's give it a little bit of a drop shadow of 2XL. And that might just work. Let's have a look. Okay, this is already looking quite nice. As you can see, we have the shadow. The background is white and separate from the foreground here. So what I'm going to have to do now is potentially just style the lists and the links. For the links, I want to give them a little bit of a padding, but that has to happen on the A, just so they're easier to press. So let me show you what I mean. So first of all, on the list, we could potentially give them a border just like a little separator. So let's do a class and this is going to be border and the border is going to be bottom and we can do border inherit. And this is actually going to be very uh, light gray color or you can just choose whatever color you wish. So hopefully you will see that we have a very light gray color in there, which is absolutely perfect. And now we can start styling the actual buttons. So for the buttons, let's give them a class. And first of all, I want them to be a block element. The reason for this is because I want them to be full width and nice and easy to press. After this, let's give them a padding of four round. And what else do we have to do? And I think that might be it. So obviously I have to copy this for the next element as well. Might as well, let's just copy it just to see what's going to happen. And we also need the border as well. Let me copy this for the list, save it, and we go back. Okay, this is looking quite nice. Obviously, you could have some sort of a nice heading or whatever. You could uh, make this a little bit better. Uh, you could center line the items. You could you can do so much in here, but this is already looking fine. The next thing that I want to do, let's copy uh, the rest of the navigation. So I'm going to have two more items. So we had articles articles and we had what did we have contact cool we could potentially set this to be kind of like an active one so earlier we chose the background slate 200 and we had the area uh, the area current to true so i could potentially do that in here as well let's give it a that and let's give it the area current to true obviously we're not going to mess with this here but just so you have the example okay that works quite well but it looks like this is just selected which is true but i don't like it so i'm going to remove this okay and leave it as it is all right i think this is nice so the next thing that i want to do is obviously this we have a close button in here so this close button is basically when we open the navigation i want the user to be able to tap anywhere around here and to close the navigation. So in order to do this, I'm actually going to have to position this button to be kind of like full width and full height. And then we we'll position the icon here on the top, uh, just so it's clickable. To do this, uh, this year we'll have to have a bigger Z index just in case. So we could potentially put Z index to this to be 10 as well. So let's do that. And for the button, let's have a look how this is going to go. So first of all, let's give it a class. So the class is going to be absolute. And then we can start top zero, right zero, zero, and left zero, like so. We could put a quick background color just to see whether this is working. So I could do background slate of 400. Let's save this and have a look. As you can see, this is working. So we're getting the background color. Obviously, I'm going to remove it in a sec. And now we just need to. Uh, give the the actual icon some styling just so it's here and you could wrap this into another diff if you wish to or span or whatever but i'm just gonna but i'm just gonna do it straight away on this element so this is gonna have a class of absolute it's gonna be top two left two and i think that's it actually that should be fine let's save it and have a look 
Okay, this is exactly what I wanted the actual the action icon. And now, as you can see, the button is clickable. It's full weight in here, which is what I wanted. This is why they were displayed as block. And the actual X is not clickable here, which is fine. So technically speaking, as you can see, when I click the this section here, it kind of turns a bluish, which means that everything we've done so far is good. So obviously I want to remove this background that was just to test like so and let's tidy things up okay i think that now is a good time to start writing our logic so we can open this navigation and close it with this button so first of all go to alpinejs.dev and grab the cdn so this is the one that i'm going to be using so we can copy this we can paste it uh, around here under our head we can put it in here as is deferred and we can start using alpinejs so because um, our elements are separate, or header and on navigation, I'm actually going to have to write the script on the body. So let me show you how this works. If we go back to the website and if we scroll down, you will see this X data. This is how we declare a new Alpine component and its data for block of HTML. And then we can use click event and change the open to true and this is how we can manipulate the dom and open and close things it's going to make a lot of sense in a second uh, this is actually a good example here of how we can dynamically hide data and show it in a second so i'm going to be using this quite a lot and it's going to make a lot of sense as we get started so first of all we need to declare a new alpine component and its data so to do this i'm going to do on the body so behind here let's do x dash data and this is going to be equals curly brackets like so and then i'm going to call this one open menu and the open menu is going to be set to false like so and this is going to be the default value so when the menu open is set to false i want the actual nav to be hidden so what i can do here this is the very basic example and it's just going to we're going to go from here and develop it as we go. So inside here, uh, I mean, I can write it anyway. I can write it behind here. Uh, what I can do is column hidden equals, and then inside here, exclamation mark, open menu. So if this is, if the open menu is false, then we want this to be hidden. It's that simple. Look at this now. If we go back, all menu is no longer appearing. This is because, where is it, where is it? This is because we have hidden, which is set to true now. Okay, so now in order to be able to toggle this, so it's not hidden, if you remove the hidden, obviously it should pop up. And as you can see, in order to be able to toggle this, we need to be able to put an on-click event on this button here. In order to do that, we can go back to Alpine.js and inside here, they've got an example and also they've got another example inside here. But let me show you if you were to go to the document and we put, uh, I think it's X dash on. This is where they have the shorthand syntax. We can literally do this on pretty much anything. So we can put at click and then whatever we wanted to do. So let's do that. So what I'm going to do on the actual button here, uh, which is this one here. So this is our hamburger menu. I can put an on-click event behind here. We can do at click equals open menu equals exclamation mark open menu. So basically, if we click on this, it's going to set open menu to true. And if we click it back, it's going to set it to false, which is the default value. Let's have a look. Let's go back, click on this. And as you can see, it appears. And obviously we can do exactly the same thing on the X button, the close button. So let me copy this click event and I can literally copy this on the close button here, like so. And this should be actually the same because if it's clicked, it's going to be true. And if it's, if you click again, it's going to set it to false. Let's have a look. So I click the menu, it opens, I click around. It's all good. We're not breaking anything. And if I click on the X, the menu closes. Perfect. So this is the very basic. And of course, if I go up, nothing else is going to break. This is the main menu. And for those of you 
who want to stop here, that's absolutely fine. But we also need to add a lot more to this. So now I actually want to add some area labels. These area labels are good for accessibility. So let me go back and start adding them one by one. So first of all, on the actual button here, this is the button that is expanding the menu. So what we can do somewhere, I mean, I mean, it's getting a little bit out of hand with the glasses and everything here, but maybe we can put on another line. Maybe we can just put the this logic on another line. I know it's not the best, but it, it is what it is. So I can do column area, expand it, equals, and then we can just put open menu because Basically, what I'm trying to achieve here is when we press the button, I want this area expanded to say whether the menu was expanded or not. And this is how the screen readers will know whether this is uh, whether the menu is expanded or not. So this is how it's going to work. And also, let actually, let's test this first of all. So I'm going to go back. Where's the button? The button is here. So we have uh, menu open. Is that the one? No. We need to go to, we need to go to header. We need to go to button. And inside here, you will see area expanded is equals to false. So at the moment the menu is closed. And if I click it, look what happens. It's set to true. So this is how we want to do everything. And let's finish this as well. So we need to do one more thing in here. And I, uh, yeah, it's because I saved it and I'm using Prettier, it's going to be breaking it, but it doesn't matter too much. And now let's do area controls. So this is basically saying, okay, when we click this button, what area are we trying to control? So I'm going to do, let's say, area controls. And this is going to be maybe mobile, let's say mobile navigation. Like so, just so it's a little bit more descriptive. And now we need to give our mobile navigation this ID. So inside here, no, this is our main navigation, sorry. Inside here, the mobile navigation, we need to give it an ID. So let's give it an ID. And this ID is going to be equals this mobile navigation. So when we click it, we know what, what's expanding. So that's perfect. So for the close button, we need to do exactly the same thing. So we could potentially copy all of this and paste it on the close button somewhere around here. We already have the click event. So area labels, and this is going to be doing exactly the same thing, but the opposite, obviously, because we're going to be closing it with the button. Cool. I think let's test it super quickly. I think this is working. It's true. False. Cool. I think this is all good. Okay. So this is a fairly basic uh, menu. As you can see, it's working quite nice. It looks nice, but I also want to animate it. So for those of you who don't want to carry on, I think this is good enough. But obviously, I want to make it a little bit better and animate it. So let's have a look at how we can do that. On our pop-out navigation, instead of toggling hidden to true or false, which will basically kill animation, what we can do is, let's put this on another line, by the way, just so we can see. We can remove this and we can do something very similar. So we can do column, we can do class, and this is going to be equals. And inside here, we can use the open menu, which is usually true or false, and we can then use conditional ternary operator, which is going to be question mark. And then inside here, we can choose what classes we want to add and what classes we want to remove, like so with the columns. So the class that I want to add, if this is true, if open menu is set to true, is visible. And if it's false, I wanted to set it to invisible, which are classes from Tailwind CSS. Like so, save it. Now let's go back and this should work exactly the same way. So if I put it out, it's just going to toggle the, um, where is it? The navigation that pops out to visible, as you can see here, and it removes it. Uh, sorry, it changes it to invisible. Awesome. This is exactly what I wanted. So we can do exactly the same logic to animate everything. So let's start with, maybe we can animate this section here. So I want this section to kind of like fly out. So to do this, this is the UL. And we have it set to absolute, which is fine. And maybe we can use translate x full. So what this is, let me show you what this is. So we, if we put translate x and then the amount here, you will see. So this is basically translating the actual uh, UL, 
we can translate it to the left, to the right, top, and so on. We can just move it. And this is going to allow us to do some really cool animations. So let me show you how we can do this. And as you can see, and also as you can see, we can um, add some hardware acceleration here, which is pretty cool, but I'm just going to ignore this for now and just do the animation. Let's go back. On the UL, let's maybe do it at the, at the bottom so we can put on a new line and you can see what's going on. What I'm going to have to do here is I'm going to have to do very similar thing of, uh, like here. So I'm going to do class and I want to toggle. So if open menu, basically true or false, then I want to add the ternary operator, conditional operator, and if it's true, we want to set the translate to zero. So this is going to be the default. Basically, this is not going to change anything. It's just going to be set to zero. Uh, it's not going to move anything anywhere. We can then translate it. Whoops. We can then translate it. Translate dash X, and we can use full, like so. Because our menu as default is set to false, this is going to be the default value, which is going to move our URL to the right side of the screen, I believe. And when we set it to true, it's just going to bring it back to where the original posi position of the URL is. Now, this is actually not enough. We also need to add some transition. So we need to add a transition class in our class names somewhere on here. So we can do transition all. And this can be set to all. There are obviously different transitions you can use, but I think this one is going to just work fine. So let's have a look. If we press on it, as you can see, it's coming out. Okay, we do have one more problem. And this is when we refresh the page, the menu is navigating. This is because Alpine.js is loading later on and it's adding the visible class to the navigation after. So you might be thinking, okay, why don't you just add the invisible class to the navigation? So if I was to copy this and add it here, that should work. But as you can see, it's not popping up. We don't have that error. But if I was to open the menu, it's not working. This is because the uh, class is not actually replaced. We wanted this visible class to be replacing the invisible. So this is a little bit of a problem. There might be a few ways of fixing it, but I'm going to use this cloak function from Alpine.js. So if you go to the documentation and you scroll down under directives, if you click on cloak, then you will see that they have a couple of methods here. And I'm going to be using this one here. So we need to add this as a CSS somewhere. So let's copy it. And it doesn't really matter where we add it. So maybe I can just add it in here, to be honest really doesn't matter. So let's put it as style and just put it here. Obviously, if you have a style sheet, just move that to the style sheet. I don't have one now in here, but so this should work as well. Anyways, let's scroll down. And now what we can do, grab this X cloak and we can literally add this to our navigation. So if I put X cloak, hopefully I go back, I refresh, it's not coming up as before and if uh, if i press the menu it's not working because i didn't remove the invisible class so let's remove the invisible class and let's have a look so f5 is not popping up which is good and if i press on the menu you will see that the menu is working and so on okay one thing that i totally forgot is to add area labels on the buttons and for the mobile menu toggle we need to add area label and this area label needs to say navigation menu. And this is because this button is obviously toggling the navigation on mobile. And then on the close button here that closes the navigation, then we need to do the same at area label. But this one needs to say close navigation menu as this button is actually closing the navigation menu. Perfect. The last thing that I wanted to talk about is that at the moment we don't have any scroll on our website, but if we did create some scroll, let's create some fake scroll in here. So I'm going to create a div and this div is going to have a style with the height of 800 pixels. So it doesn't really matter. Let's create an H1 in here. So normally on your website, you will have a lot of content and you will have a scroll, which is totally normal. Now, what's going to happen here is when I open the menu, this scroll will still be there, which is a little bit annoying. 
So you might want to have the actual menu if you have a lot of items to scroll, but you don't really usually want the body to scroll. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to append a class to the body so the overflow is hidden. And we've already done this a couple of times now with Alpine.js. So what we can do is go to the top here on the body and inside here, let's do it on another line just so you can see. And inside here, we can do column class equals open menu like so. And then we check whether the menu is open or the menu is closed. If the menu is open, we need to set overflow hidden, which is a tailwind class. And if the menu is closed, we want to have the scroll obviously so the users can scroll so we can do overflow visible. Let's tidy things up, save this and let's have a look whether this works. So if you go back to the website, we have the scroll as normal. Then we click on the menu and the scroll is now gone, which is perfect. So that's pretty much everything from this tutorial. And if I go to the desktop, you'll see that the menu is still working. And if I refresh, it's all good. So that's going to be everything from this tutorial. I know that it was a very detailed tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something new. Please uh, consider subscribing to my channel. Give this video a like and let me know what do you think of Elwin CSS and Alpine JS in the comments below. And I will see you in the next one.